All right, it is 6.30, so we're gonna call the meeting to order. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Yes, okay, we're gonna start with Commissioner Ramos. Here. Commissioner Maharaj. Commissioner Hobbs and Ford. Here. Commissioner Foley. Here. Commissioner De Natale. Here. Commissioner Kino. Commissioner Bowen. Here. Commissioner Bond. Commissioner Boldenweck. Here. Vice Chair Mardahe. Here. And Chairperson Campania. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so agenda review for today. We're going to do approval of the minutes. We have some citizen participation. We'll get to our unfinished business, talk about some new business. We will have our subcommittee share outs. Um, we will then move on to items from commission items from staff. Our correspondence were sent via email, uh, but if there's any comments, we can take them then, and then we will adjourn afterwards. So speaking of approval of the minutes, um, has anybody, has everybody had a chance to review the minutes and are there any changes necessary this time? All right, not hearing much there. Um, next up, we are going to do citizen participation. I see some citizens out here, so I'm going to go ahead and pass it to Mayor Mark. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is Mark DeGaulle, Mayor of uh, City of South San Francisco. I've been going around to all the various commissions and um, just popping my head in, and I definitely wanted to make sure that I, that I come here and just say thank you for all the great work that you do. I'm just so amazed of just what's happening in terms of our city, in terms of the artwork, in terms of the cultural arts. Just, I, I can't do this without you, without all of you here in terms of making our city a, a better place. And I've talked to numerous individuals when I go for walks or just when people call and email me and they just talk about what's happening in their city and just how proud they are in terms of just the various things that they see. And I, and I can't take the credit for it because it's the great work that you all do. And I wanted to make sure that I recognize that and I, and I share that with all of you because I wanted to say thank you. And thank you for the work that you do to make our city one of the best cities in the county. <laughs> and so with that, I know you have a full agenda. Um, and so I'm looking forward to hearing a lot of the a lot of the work that's coming up and know that myself and other members of the city council, if we can do whatever we can to help you, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. And you have a wonderful, wonderful staff um, that I love talking to and get updates from. So again, on behalf of the city council, I just wanted to say thank you for your amazing, amazing work. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know if um, city manager Futrell has anything to share. Sharon, I see you on here too. Greg, we got the whole squad on here tonight. Um, <laughs> if anybody else has comments before we- They got nervous when they found out I was going all <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, no, no. It was like the principal is in town, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I really can't add anything to what the, the mayor said, except uh, absolutely right. And uh, Sharon and I and Greg were talking earlier this week about some new projects we'd like to hand off to you. Yeah, you did such a great job on some stuff for us recently. We're going to give you more work uh, as we look to beautify our city and bring more art and culture. So thank you and uh, just great job. Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate both of your kind words, um, you know, keeps us going. Um, also, just for the record, I want to make sure that we note that um, Commissioner Bond and Commissioner Maharaj are here as well. Thanks for being here. Good to see you both. Um, next up, we have unfinished business. Uh, I don't think it, 
anything is listed on the agenda, but is there any unfinished business we need to attend to? All right, nothing, I'm gonna keep it moving. New business, same thing, nothing on the agenda. Is there any new business? Again, here are nothing. So we're gonna to go to the fun part, the subcommittee share outs. Um, for strategic vision, looking to you, Michael. Okay, yeah, last our subcommittee met, the um, city staff is still working to finalize the public art plan consultant contracts and get those started. Um, so unless there's any other updates from city staff, um, are there, or are we kind of in that? There is, way? as of this week, Michael, it's been signed, okay. so we're pushing along. Great, thank you. Um, so um, what does that mean? Does that mean we will bring that to the strategic vision subcommittee this following week or? Yeah, so we're working with the team to um, put together the um, date rollouts and we'll pass that along to all of you guys once those are all firmed up um, for their visits and their outreach. Awesome, thank you. Um, we also discussed the Orange Park pool. And as you know, that um, process is underway with the consultants to um, vision that. So what that means for us and our commission is there are a couple um, items. There is um, the feedback from the community that we can help influence what that looks like, what that, um, is some of the ideas that we shared on our call is uh, public art and architecture using materials such as industrial colored glass, sculptural ceramic, mosaic tiles, recycled water features, of course, budgets and such come into the purpose and the functions of the building first, but um, definitely participate in some of those meetings, um, use your voice. And I know the city has on the agenda later on a little more about that. Um, and the concerns, the relocation of the existing sculpture. We have the eternal flame there, which was um, done in the either late 60s or early 70s. Um, and so that looks like it either needs some renovation or um, some work done. Also, decisions need to be made on where to move that because the new Orange Park pool is going to be in that place. So um, we just started talking about that. Obviously, there's a lot of time, but these are things that we as a commission need to um, think about, talk about, and um, that's the update from our subcommittee. Awesome. Thank you. So much, appreciate it. Always working on something. Uh, number two, sculpture. Are there any updates at this time? Nothing at this time, thank you. Thank you. Uh, number three, urban art. So we do have um, actually two nice updates. One of them is on um, the Prometheus um, mural restoration. And so that has been completed. And Angela, I don't know if you would be able to share your screen. Um, I'll feel a little silly walking through like this whole thing, but I wanted to uh, everybody to see this again. They they have um, Presidia Eyes and Mural Doctor have produced this super cute little report, um, which is very visual. Um, so if we want to kind of scroll through it and basically give you an update of the before and after. And so the, the process, so, um, you know, various uh, steps in the process and apparently it's all recorded on YouTube, which is kind of awesome. If you wanna go to the next one. Um, and, and some more information around um, the um, uh, conservation and um, continuing to work with the artist. Um, so maybe Angela, would it be all right to share this in the chat so that people can um, read through at their leisure? 
Yes, they can do that. Cool. But anyway, wanted to share that um, very cute little update, and um, it's great to have that mural restoration done. So um, thanks again to Presidia Eyes. And then the next update is that it is my understanding that the Alta Loma mural is going to be starting in um, May, um, every Saturday in May, weather permitting. Um, it's very exciting. This is a project with Skyline College. Michael, I think you're actually participating in this too. Yeah, and I'd like to say we actually started last week. Oh, you week. already started. Okay, wow. So you'll see that there is um, quite a bit of color on the walls already. Um, so it's definitely underway. And um, I encourage anyone um, to stop by. Actually, so no, last weekend we got rained out. It was the weekend prior to that. So um, weather permitting, if you are free and around between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. on um, any given Saturday, you might catch us out there. So feel free to stop on by and so say hi. So weather permitting this Saturday included? Yep, this That's Saturday included. Great. That's great. Setting project, glad to hear it's kicked off. And I think that's it for right now. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I think that comics are now my favorite <laughs> type of presentation. So I appreciate that. Um, okay, next up is youth art program. So we have quite a bit to share out here. Um, Sarah and I are going to tag team this. So I'm going to pass it to Sarah and then I will take it from there. Thanks, Ryan. Hi, everyone. So yes, we do have quite a bit to report on. Um, so the first item is the youth art show. Um, which is coming up very soon here in um, another week, April 29th to the 30th, which is next Friday and Saturday. Um, I think most importantly, we're still looking for volunteers, um, mainly for Saturday, I believe. At this point, we have no volunteers for Saturday for the two shifts, the shift um, between noon and two, and then two o'clock to four o'clock. Um, and then we have only one volunteer for, for the other shifts. So um, we strongly urge everyone to please, please, please um, take a look at the online survey that ERC sent out um, with the, uh, the, the time slots and, and please put in your availability and consider um, coming out to volunteer uh, because we really, really need that. Um, in terms of the event itself, we're really excited for it to get underway. Um, the, the staff have some really exciting things planned. They have some, some giveaway items for youth visitors who are coming in at Friday's opening. Um, we, unlike past events, are not going to be doing food items just for COVID safety and things of that nature, but there will be bottled water. Um, and then in terms of um, the presentation, the uh, library will be making a 20 to 30 minute presentation um, about the 2022 Poet in Residence Honoree, which is gonna be really exciting. They'll have some poetry readings. Um, and um, I'm really looking forward to that. I actually served as, as um, one of the judges and there was some really awesome submissions. So I think that's gonna be great. Um, and we'll also have a uh, commissioner on, on um, this commission to speak briefly, um, and I think we are. I think we're looking for a volunteer for that as well. I mean, RC, correct me if I'm wrong. Do we need somebody for that as well? Um, I, I think Ryan uh, said that he would um, would uh, be here in time to take care of that. Is that correct, Ryan? To yeah. The, okay. But if anybody has a dying nope. need to do it, I can you know give up that <laughs> spot too. But I will be there at the same time. Okay, great, perfect. Um, okay, so, um, and then in terms of entries, um, so far we have 17 students who have submitted online entries, which is great, and um, uh, the submission deadline has been extended out uh, until tomorrow, 5 p.m. until tomorrow, and um, entries are expected from over 13 child care sites, which I know is really exciting and, and wonderful, um, so hopefully we'll get even more submissions before the, the deadline tomorrow. Um, so with that, um, I'll move on to the next item, which is the fundraiser, the barbecue fundraiser, which we're really, again, excited for to bring back. Um, you know, it'll be the first in-person fundraising event since 
I don't know how long because of COVID. Um, and so again, we're looking for people. So just as a reminder, um, what we have scheduled right now is the date of August 28th, which is a Sunday. Um, it's gonna be between 12.30 and 2.30 at the Pernicke's building, which has been um, reserved. Um, the idea is that we're, we'd like to do a barbecue like we've done in years past and do a silent auction. Um, as of right now, we, you know, are still, we're, we're soliciting donations for, for um, the silent auction. Um, and the idea is to um, have it be a ticketed event where $10 for adults, $5 for kids which will get you a meal and a drink. And then hopefully we can sort of supplement that with some snacks and, and sell those on, on the side to sort of um, raise our, our fundraising efforts. Um, but I think at this point in time, what we're looking for is, is for other commissioners to help uh, get involved in the process. It's gonna take a lot of planning. It's gonna take a lot of work to reach out to, to um, sponsors. It's been several years since we've had to do it last and, and many people have retired or some of those contacts have sort of just gone away. So I think it's gonna be a big push and a big effort on our part to sort of get um, donations and, and silent auction items and things like that and planning underway. Um, so uh, if anybody's interested, we you know highly urge you to you know co contact uh, staff or myself or if you know any, or Ryan, um, and let us know, you know, uh, that way we can sort of form a, a subcommittee and, and get it, get some headway. Sarah, would you mind um, sending out an email to the effect of like the, the different categories that you're looking for, whether it's reaching out to, to um, sponsors or um, physical donations or, or whatnot, just to kind of keep it all clear? Yeah, I think that's, yeah, that, that's fine. I think the idea is to just get people who um, are excited or who, who want to volunteer and want to get involved and then we'll sort of try to organize a meeting and figure out what can be divvied up. And yeah, I think, I, I mean, yes, perhaps we can take it offline. I think to add on to that too, the expectation is that we are all there on the day of. Um, it's a really heavy lift. I mean, there's no way that Sarah and myself and Paula Claudine can handle all of the planning alone. So that's why we need help with the planning. But on the day of, it's, it's a, a day of work. You know, we have to get there, set up, uh, make sure our space is ready for the general public or anybody that comes in to attend the event. And then we do cleanup and there's a lot that has to go into registration and silent auction. So those of us that have been to this event before and been there, you know, when we were able to physically be present together um you know this is a, a large volunteering day but as far as like you know expectations we we do expect that everybody is there to help on the day of the event and ryan can i'm sorry if i just missed this can you remind me what the day is yeah it's august 28th okay and it's going to be at the joseph fernicke's building which is in orange park block it off and do my best then. awesome yeah, so thank you for that ryan so i think yeah. That, yeah, that's it I'll cool. Pass back to you. Thank you. So um, in addition to what Sarah mentioned, um, mm -hmm. we have some decisions to make around the Jack Drago scholarship. Um, so we had uh, the deadline recently passed. It was April 18th. Uh, we had five submissions from high schoolers from uh, South City High School as well as El Camino. And as a commission, as a subcommittee, we met and made some decisions that we would like to bring to the larger group, uh, have some discussion around those decisions, and then we will make a motion to approve and pass that on from there. Um, so out of the five applicants, um, two of them really stood out to our subcommittee. Um, the first one uh, is named Nadine. Um, they had some really incredible art, um, has had some experience with more commercial art and um, creating window designs for established um, buildings in the city um, or in, in San Francisco, um, also has a website that lists, um, you know, a pretty incredible, you know, in my opinion, pretty incredible um, database of their art. Uh, they also have a Society6 shop, like a very, you know, well-established artist. Um, all of us were like, are we sure this person is in high school? Um, so that is one of the people that we are recommending that we give an award to. The second one is named Celeste. Um, most of their work is um, like really like poppy, colorful art. Um, 
I think the the medium that they prefer is uh, watercolor uh, along with like pen or illustration. Um, I think a great thing about both of these applicants is that they have already decided to pursue art in their future. So one is going to San Jose State to pursue animation and um, another one is going to the Rhode Island Institute of Design. So um, pretty impressive um, candidates this year. Uh, what we decided and we would like to approve as a larger commission, but the subcommittee decided that we would like to split the $3,000 scholarship between the two, um, the two contestants or the two applicants. Um, so that would be $1,500 to Nadine and $1,500 to Celeste. Both students go to El Camino High School. I know typically in the past we try and split that money um, to both schools or all three schools with Baden included. Um, the way that it worked out this year and kind of the, the um, applications that we saw, we didn't want to pass on somebody that deserved the art just because of the school that they went to. Um, so it just so happens that this year, the two people that we're recommending to the commission uh, are coming from the same school. So um, with that said, I don't, you know, if anybody has any discussion or has any questions about the deliberation process, um, I want to leave some space for that before I make a motion. Ryan, do you have the website where we could access and look at their art or the submitted art or it's strictly for you guys? Uh, I, I think we can share it. Um, I mean, this is information that all of us have, should have equal access to. I can get it. I actually don't know if I can share it. Angela, would you be able to, I don't think I can share out to the entire group in the chat. Oh, I think, I mean, just also because the, app, uh, the PDFs have the private information of the person. Mm -hmm. I, I can share on the screen though, just for the purpose of sharing um, their artwork. So the first person is Nadine, is that right? Correct. She's the one who I am actually going to share her website. This I could have dropped in the chat um, because she linked to her webpage as part of her application. So you can see she's done wow. professional work. Yeah. And Nadine mentioned that they have access, they wow. work with a, a company or something called EQ. So they have access to kind of getting their art out there, which is pretty cool. And that's mm -hmm. how this project came to be. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome. So I'll drop this link in the chat, but she's got a variety of works. Wow, that's, that's very awesome. professional. Yes. Mm -hmm. I can't believe this is done by a high schooler. I, yeah, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> that was our sentiment as well. <laughs> yeah. Is that, uh, wow. Is this the, the student that's going to uh, Rhode Island? It is. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Wow. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing it in person. I just kind of want to feel the texture. It sounds like there's so much just to to see. Yeah, and meeting her. I mean, oh yeah, absolutely. We, Raw talent. Always it would be that. great <laughs> if we could get um examples of both winners' art exhibited mm -hmm. at our fundraiser in August. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. This is amazing. She's got quite a scope of work too. Yes. Oh yeah, she's hyper talented. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, great, thank you. Thank you, Angela. Um, so with that being said, um, I would like to make a motion that we move uh, to give Nadine $1,500 as a scholarship, as well as Celeste, uh, $1,500 of a scholarship for the Jack Drago 
uh, Youth Art Scholarship this year. And these are examples of Celeste's Celeste. work. Wow. This is great. So Celeste just has these three with her submission. That's still very good. Yeah. Very, very nice. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I can see why you guys chose them. <laughs> Perfect candidates. <laughs> That's some of the, I, I'm really impressed. That's some of the best work I've seen in a long time. Looking uh, forward looking to for following them. Yeah. You're looking for a second? I'm looking for a second. Well, you have mine. <laughs> <You're> third. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, I think technically we do need to do a roll call vote though. Okay. <laughs> And mm -hmm. then you're going to get a unanimous um, yeah. newly votes in. <laughs> All right. So we'll start with uh, Commissioner Ramos. Aye. Commissioner Maharaj. Aye. Commissioner Hobson Cord. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Yes. Commissioner De Natale. Aye. Commissioner Cancino. Aye. Commissioner Bowen. Yes. Commissioner Bond. Aye. Commissioner Boldenweck. Aye. Vice Chair Mardahe. Definitely, yes. And Chairperson Campani. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it, everybody. That is probably my favorite thing that we do, um, giving money to people who want to pursue art. So thank you, everybody, so much. Um, I do want to mention, I want to bring up the fundraiser um, for one last thing that I forgot to mention. Um, we kind of saw this as an opportunity for uh, community engagement as well. Um, there is a lot that we're going to have to do as far as lifting up um, donations, uh, whether that is for food or for silent auctions. And I know that in being a part of the community engagement, we've kind of been looking for ways to plug into this commission. So um, Millie and, and for the rest of the group, I think that there is an opportunity and I, you know, we need the help on this one. So um, just wanted to make sure that we bring that up and kind of bring it to everybody's attention too. Absolutely. I'll put it on the agenda. We're going to have a meeting and I'll put it on the agenda and we'll definitely um, delve a little more into, you know, detail. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much. So that concludes our update for the youth art programs. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate you. Um, moving on to number five of our subcommittees, the 2D Art and Craft Show for July 15th and 16th. So I don't have any recent updates about that, but um, I think we have set the theme and, um, and the media and... Mercy, do you have anything to add? Uh, nothing at this time, Risha. Um, normally for the adult art shows, I'd be getting a form to you uh, so that the uh, subcommittee chair uh, and members can make decisions as to the details for the guidelines. So uh, more information should be forthcoming in May. Beautiful, thank you. Um, number six performing arts? Uh, no updates at the moment. Understood. And finally, our community engagement. We got a little bit of what's going on, but um, Millie, do you have anything to share? No, but we will have a meeting um, um, that we will schedule before the May session. So we will definitely discuss, oh, Ryan, something that you brought in. Uh, help with the fundraiser and also had a couple of action items that I wanted to introduce. I personally went to a couple of uh, private galleries and then met a, a few artists who specialize in sustainability. They create art out of recycled plastics, metals, and it's just garbage. <laughs> What's garbage to me is it's medium to them. So I kind of wanted to um, introduce them to the subcommittee uh, at our next meeting. So um, kind of looking forward to our meeting. So we'll discuss it now May, in our, in our May CAC. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, that concludes our subcommittee share outs. Uh, next up on the agenda is items from commission. Does anybody have an item to bring to the larger group? I have an item. <laughs> so <laughs> Silicon Valley Open Studios will be May 14th and 15th. 
and myself and my colleagues at Project 275 and Redwood City will have our studios open. So you're all invited. And uh, there's a, a notice in the event packet, which kind of gives you the details if you're interested. So that's it's in the packet, Peter? OK. Yeah. That's my story. <laughs> Um, I have uh, one share. Um, as I noted in the last meeting, I'm participating in the Women's View, um, which is sponsored by the San Mateo County Arts um, Commission, and that commences next weekend on the 29th. So you still have another week to uh, go down to Redwood City and check out some fantastic arts. And then on um, June 18th, um, over at Fort McKinley, which is in South San Francisco, my band Love Struck will be performing at eight o'clock. Thanks. Awesome, sure. thank you. Any other items from commission? All right, you missed your chance. Next up, <laughs> <laughs> items from staff. We have three things coming up here. Okay, so I'm going to take first one talking about a couple upcoming events. Um, I know Commissioner Dantali uh, touched on it a little bit earlier. Um, the new aquatic center um, is being planned out, and we are having a few community workshop events. Uh, we had one um, Saturday, April 9th. The next one coming up is going to be Saturday, April. 30th, so I think it's a good opportunity for you guys to either um, hear what the ideas are going to be or even uh, hear from the public about what they would like to see. Um, and that one is from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, and it's over at the Joseph A. Fernickes building at Orange Park. Um, again, I'll say that's Saturday, April 30th. And then next, um, we are having our Arbor Day and Earth Day volunteer event, and that's going to be on April 23rd from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, over at Sister Cities Park um, at the South Magnolia entrance. And it's going to be um, a day where our Parks and Recreation Department and our Improving Public Places Committee gets together and they plant native plants and trees uh, to South City to help reduce our water consumption and um, improve our urban ecosystem. Um, this was all included in what uh, Specialist Santos uh, put together for you guys. So you can look at those flyers there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gabby. I'll jump over to the next one. I mean, thanks. I'm glad to hear that our new Aquatic Center project has been pushed a few times already. And so you all, have the link um, on the printed on the agenda if you want more information about our upcoming events. I don't think they've been posted yet, but we'll also have a recap of um, what's happened at the first event, as well as a community survey will be coming out soon. So if you can't make it to one of our outreach efforts, you can respond to the survey and please pass it on. We're really excited about that project. Um, Another project that we are excited about and uh, much credit goes to our parks division and Joshua Richardson, who's our parks manager. Um, they are working on renovating the old breezeway that's between third lane and Grand Avenue near Starbucks downtown. So um, it started about three weeks ago and this week they have started forming and pouring concrete for the entire walkway and um, are preparing the surface to install some art pavers that were salvaged from a construction project on Haskins Way. So I have a photo to share with you here. So this is a photo of some of the work in progress now. And, um, This is a photo of the art pavers in their original location. These have, will be relocated to the new breezeway. And I see Michael has his hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, um, 
a few years ago now, <laughs> 2019, we had as a commission talked about um, a couple art pieces, one specifically related to that location. And it had even at the time gotten passed through council and approved. Um, is there an update on that and whether or not that can still be pursued and incorporated into this project? Yeah, one thing I should mention about this um, renovation is that um, we have installed some, the infrastructure that would be needed for such hanging art and um, credit to Josh for thinking ahead and remembering that intended art purchase from 2019. Um, the funds for, for purchasing that are, um, I mean, it was in progress, but because of COVID and budget reductions, the, the funds got taken away. It's still very much on our radar in the future. If we do have additional funding, I think Aaron's going to share a budget update with you all um, after I'm done with this piece. So it's all connected. But the good thing is, I, I think, had we purchased the art in 2019, we wouldn't necessarily have had that infrastructure in place yet. It would have been one of our questions for like, how do we actually hang this art? But um, I'm really happy that now, you know, it's a possibility as well as other art opportunities in that area. Um, one thing I should mention is, it's, for those of you familiar with the old breezeway is that there are um, what's called the doors of Avignon there. And um, our parks team will, they've taken those doors down and I will- Not I'm yet. Not sure. okay. No, they're, they're still up, Angela. Oh, they are, okay. I, I think there's a question about um, if they're salvageable though. So this is a picture of one of them, uh, but we will be bringing that up to the Urban Art Subcommittee, I think. Yeah, I think we need to do a little bit more legwork on um, whether or not they are salvageable. Um, they're they're painted on plywood sheets, and the plywood's starting to delaminate pretty badly. Um, so they. My personal thought is they probably will not be salvageable, but um, I think we do have a little bit more like work to do on that um, before coming back to you all. This is a really random idea, but do you think, Greg, maybe even if they're not salvageable for outdoor public art display, they would be good enough for like indoor, um, like even a private art collection? Maybe that didn't really occur to us, but we can, we can take a look at that. I, I wonder, and I, I, we will not be able to determine this tonight, but I wonder if it would be interesting to, with permission of the artist, with permission of the city, to donate them for private art collection um, for our fundraiser, since they are pretty major pieces of art maybe a little bit of history, a little piece of South San Francisco. And if they're still in good enough shape for indoor display, maybe private collectors would find that fun. That's so. an excellent idea if it's possible. I, I just would um, maybe comment on that. So the artist of those uh, Doors of Avignon is John Pugh. And John Pugh's a pretty well-known artist at the time. This is 25 years ago. He was an emerging artist. Um, but if, if you've ever been down to the Stanford Shopping Center, uh, he is the same artist that did the artwork at the Stanford Shopping Center. And he's also done uh, trompe l'oeil all over the world. So, oh, wow. He's fun. Fun. so he, might, he might actually be collectible enough that it would bring in a potentially nice donation. Uh, it could, or or I, I think the idea of repurposing them on maybe an, an indoor location is an interesting oh, idea and um, something we might think about. The, the problem is going to be, um, and I was around back in the, at this time, I believe that they were epoxied to that wall. Uh, so removing that, the plywood is, is uh, going to be a, a, a challenge without destroying the artwork. 
So uh, we'll see. You know, there were a lot of issues because those are private owners on both sides. So they're not city buildings, they're privately owned buildings. And I think you guys know how I feel about, you know, it's, it's very difficult to do an installation on private property because there's just so many concerns. So we'll have to be super careful when we take those off, not to destroy the membrane of that wall, cause any leakage, cause the owners any heartburn over the integrity of, the, of their buildings. Um, and so um, they'll, they'll be in. It'll be a delicate operation, but that's a cool idea, Risha. So uh, we should keep that in mind. And if we can save them, we absolutely should. And he, like I said, he, John Pugh, P U G H, if you want to look him up, uh, he he has become a pretty uh, well known international artist. But again, we got him for dirt cheap back in the day when he was just an emerging artist. Well, under those circumstances, Sharon, if they're salvageable, um, we should try to save them. I mean, even uh, if they're early art of someone who is well known at this point, it's it's kind of against our purpose to. Um, I I don't know that we could get rid of. I mean, we can the city donate something like that? Well. So Lynn, I think that's a really excellent point. And I was about to, to build on that. Um, I was about to ask, you know, if we could get a rough appraisal about what they're worth and rather than the city donating them to, to you know, the donations, if the city can donate them to a museum or an art institute for, I don't know if the city can get tax purposes, I don't know. But in any case, they if they have a value that could be appraised, that could be potentially balanced against, you know, if we damage a building and we pay for the repair of the building, I mean, if it, you know, that's that's potentially a, a cost benefit analysis. We'll, we'll definitely take a look and do our best to um, try and save them. The, the other thing I can tell you is Mr. Pugh is not the easiest artist we've ever worked with. You know, some artists are super, uh, collaborative and some are not and um, he, he was he was difficult I'll just tell you the truth he was difficult to work with so um, we'll, ha we'll have to work through all of that um. oh. okay I think Aaron's next one more from staff unless Ursi has other things to add yeah thanks Angela um so just quickly I wanted to um Inform the commission that, um, as Angela touched upon, we are in budget season. So all our uh, new year requests for fiscal year 22 and 23 um, have been submitted and are going to be going in front of the um, budget subcommittee this coming Tuesday. So if any of you are interested, it is Tuesday the 26th at 1 p.m. I believe it's hybrid, so there would be a Zoom link for that. Um, and then just a couple items to keep for you guys that um, may be of interest, um, Parks and Recreation Department alone has submitted um, supplies and services requests over $500,000. Um, and so some of those requests um, would be, there's $10,000 for public art allocation. Um, as in years past, we kind of do that on a year to year request based on needs. Um, and just as a reminder, um, we are anticipating still that our public art development fee will be able to come on board sometime in 2023. Uh, we'll have to do a kind of an evaluation of that to kind of see where exactly in 2023 and if that's still on track. Um, and that can come at a future report to you guys. And then the other one, uh, the other couple items that might be of interest is our uh, Enhanced concert in the park. So um, this year we are looking to do um, a two stage and with one being a focus on um, community, but cultural community uh, performances. And then also for those of you that remember a day in the park, we're going to have a similar aspect where we're going to have um, community based booths. Um, so that will be added and that is going in at $150,000 um, request and then um, we are going to try and bring back the cultural arts activities grant um, for $10,000, which is a program that was established to support um, community organizations and artists who kind of have a cultural uh, focus and at free or low cost, maybe they do events or um, kind of programs that um, kind of will introduce the community to different cultural aspects. So 
Um, there's a few other items, but those were kind of ones I thought um, would highlight for the Cultural Arts Commission. It's really exciting. Miss Day in the Park. Yeah. That's all I had, Ryan. Oh, thank you. Um, Ursi, did you have anything to add? I don't know if you did or not, but I can keep it moving if not. Uh, no, nothing, Ryan, only to uh, just remind the commissioners that you, in your correspondence email, you received two packets. One was email uh, correspondence and the other was an event packet, uh, which has Peter's uh, Silicon Valley exhibit information and the information that Gabby spoke to related to the uh, aquatic center uh, workshops and the Arbor Day. So you want to take a look at that um, to um, be aware of it. That's all I have, thank you. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, your correspondence, like Ursi said, are in your emails um, and there is nothing further on the agenda. So thank you for all of the hard work that's being done in our subcommittees. Um, we have a lot of cool things that we're working on. We have our annual events and then, you know, we're always working on something new and trying to make our city as awesome as it can be and as pretty as it can be. So with that being said, appreciate you all. Um, I am going to adjourn the meeting at 716. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, guys.